we all monitor Kubernetes and we all use fancy dashboards. You must be familiar with Grafana, but are there any alternatives to Grafana, which are part of the CNCF core ecosystem? Yes, there is a project called Persis. My name is Sam Bhattak, and in this video, we'll discuss all about Persis. So Persis is a dashboard. It's a CNCF sandbox project. It's an open source tool, a dashboard where you can display the observability data. Yes, it has less number of data sources. So it has Prometheus and Tempo. And obviously they plan to kind of expand it more and more. A few things which makes Persis kind of unique is uh, its open specification. So it's a standardized dashboard specification for interoperability across the observability tooling. It has various NPM packages that allows developers to embed panels and the dashboard into their own UIs. Persis is extensible with its own plugin support. It is GitOps friendly. So what, what that means is so it comes with a CLI as well. And you can validate and you can store that. So it is more Kubernetes native. So you have those custom resource definition. Everything can be deployed. All your dashboards and stuff can be composed in a CRD and that can be put inside your GitHub repository. So Persis makes itself GitOps friendly tool for the dashboard and they call it as a dashboard as code. So D A C. So dashboard as a code where you can codify your dashboard and you can uh, use pro the go SDK or Qlang uh, for writing this as well. So in a nutshell, Persis is an open source dashboard tool for standardizing the observability. Right now it supports the Prometheus and Tempo metrics. And the big idea is open dashboard specification and the developer first workflow where dashboards are authored as code, validated in the CI and promoted just like the application releases. In the CNCF stack, uh, we had standards and tooling for metrics and traces like Prometheus, Thanos, Jaeger, but no vendor neutral for dashboards. Persis exactly fills that particular gap into declarative code driven dashboards so that the teams can reuse the patterns, avoid and edited JSONs. Now, why dashboard as code? So Persis treats dashboards as first class type artifacts. So you can author it using Go or Qlang, compile that to JSON YAML. So there is PERCLI where you can build that and apply that using the per CLI apply. We'll do that all uh, in the demo upcoming. Because they are code, you get the compile time checks. Uh, you can reuse uh, the functions, builders, all the stuff that you do when you develop an application. Uh, it is GitOps friendly. You can commit everything inside Git and uh, your CI can run the per CLI DAC build. You generate the artifacts, validate, and then it can use the per CLI apply to the uh, Persis endpoint. Persis also supports versioning from the file at startup so that clusters can boot with a known good set of resources and reconcile them periodically. So what I have is I have a sample application. I have a lot of stuff configured. Uh, I already have a kubectl get nodes. I have a Kubernetes cluster in place as well. The first step that I'm going to do is install the kube Prometheus stack. So I'm doing the Helm repo add of the Prometheus Helm charts and then creating the namespace and Helm install of the Kube Prometheus stack. It will soon install the Kube Prometheus stack. So we have the Kube Prometheus stack installed on the cluster. So I have created a demo application, a Go service that exposes four Prometheus metrics, uh, total request by path, method, status, latency, histogram, an in-flight gauze and a business counter for processed items. So there is a slash work endpoint that randomly sleeps and fails to produce movement on the graphs and then slash metrics using the official Go Prometheus client library. So if we try to explain this, uh, you have some of the standard libraries, log for the logging, uh, you have math for simulating the processing timers and the errors. Um, you have uh, net HTTP to run the HTTP server. And then you have this for the conversions and timings. And then you have the Prometheus client libraries. So now comes the metrics definitions. So first is HTTPS request total. So this is a counter that increases with every request labeled by path method and code. Then you have the uh, request duration. And this is the histogram. So you can see this is the histogram that measures request latency by response times. And it uses the Prometheus uh, def buckets. And 
these are like defaults you know 5 milliseconds 10 milliseconds up to 10 seconds then you have in flight metrics uh, which is the gauze metrics that goes up and down that tracks how many requests are currently being processed you have items processed as part of the business metric that shows how many items were processed with a result label ok or error so this is the instrumentation code this wraps every request increment in flight goes at start um, record start time pass the request to the real handler measure how long it took record an histogram increment the http request total uh, with path method status and uh, decrement in flight when done and this this basically ensures that every request automatically updates the metrics then you have the response recorder that wraps the http response writer so that we can capture the http status code uh, returned by the handlers so you have the handlers slash work endpoint simulates real work so sleeves uh, from 50 to 250 milliseconds 10 percent of the time fails with 500 and then it increments items process total result error otherwise returns 200 okay and then if 200 okay then it increments the process total with result okay slash health is for the kubernetes slash health endpoint for the liveness readiness probe then you have the main function so you have mux which is the multiplexer with the routes slash simple hello slash work simulated workload slash metrics uh, prometheus scrape endpoint served by prom http handler and then slash health which is the slash health z which is the health checkup and uh, it is running on port 8080 so this is the simple go application then you have the docker file where you have the build phase you copy everything you build it and then you have the run phase where you copy the above build output in the digital s image and then you have the deploy.yaml where you create a namespace you create a deployment with the image built and then you open the port you have the readiness liveness probes you have the resource request limit you have the service for that that you have created and then we create a service monitor so prometheus operator the one that we have just installed on the kubernetes cluster will automatically discover this via the service monitor so this is the service monitor where we have given the metadata the release uh, which must match your helm release name and the spec section that matches the demo metrics service in the namespace and the endpoint that it has to scrape from the goland application that i just show you so let's try to see everything in action so kubectl get pods hyphen a so we can see our prometheus uh, is up and running so we have docker buildx build platform linux amd64 tagged it as cm911 versus demo latest push we'll build that again so the image is built in push now we have the deploy so we'll add the service monitor and deploy our application so kubectl apply hyphen f deploy so this creates the namespace deployment and the service monitor now let's come to the persis deployment so it's a namespace persis and the deployment where we are giving persis dev persis 051 one container port 8080 some probes and uh, then a service for that as well so this is a very simple deployment that we have for persis i already have deployed it so kubectl get ports hyphen n persis so we already have this now what we we'll, we are going to do is we're going to port forward that because it created a service too and then now we try to access this so localhost 8080 and you can see uh, currently there is no dashboard or visualization so what we can do this is the dashboard uh, you can add project so we'll add a new project demo uh, we'll add it over here and what we are going to do next is uh, in that we can add variables so you can add your own set of variables you can add secrets over here which is very good this is the interesting part obviously without this you won't be able to get any data so you need to add the data source um, i'll tell you one thing why we are giving data source a particular name because what we'll be going to do next is 
we will be creating a dashboard.go. So dashboard.go is um, basically a codified version of the dashboard. So yes, you can do the dashboard as code. This is what is the main USP, right? For uh, purses that you can do dashboard as code. Now here we are doing the purses go SDK and uh, we have uh, the dashboard and the panel. Uh, we have Prometheus plugin. And then in this particular thing, we are uh, creating a new dashboard. So new dashboard project name and we are making sure it belongs to the project name demo now we are saying the local prometheus data source that it has to add this particular dashboard to is the prom in cluster so that's the one that it has to add to and then point to the prometheus service and this is exactly what we need to give in the ui when we are adding it so this particular name scrape interval maybe five seconds because we want it quick enough now the url so url is cube prometheus stack prometheus dot cube prometheus stack svc 9090 and save so it should give us the data source which is added now when we go over here we don't have anything yet so we don't have any dashboard we have to add a dashboard now you can add a dashboard manually but what we are trying to do is we are trying to add a dashboard in a codified way. So next we are adding a variable. So we are getting uh, the pod because we are creating this particular dashboard for our O11Y demo pod that we deployed onto the cluster. And we are now adding the panels. So we are adding traffic, uh, latency errors. Uh, it is basically add panel uh, request by path. This is a PromQL query. This will return CP95. And then you have the errors. And then you have the add panel. So everything is the prompt QL queries. Very simple prompt QL queries over here. So what to do next is basically you can install the per CLI. So you can go here and the purses releases when you download this, any of the operating system specific. So I already have downloaded that for CLI. You can see that now what we do is we do the login. So per CLI login localhost 8080 successfully logged in because we are already port forwarding that through localhost 8080. And now we already have dashboard.go. So we do per CLI DAC dashboard as code built hyphen F dashboard.go and give a JSON from that. So it successfully got the json now we apply this cube serial apply per cli apply hyphen f built so the object has been applied in the project demo now when we come back we go to purses we do the refresh we should be able to see a dashboard over here which was not earlier so we can see a dashboard coming up over here and you can see all the graphs uh, that we created last five minutes uh, we can also set auto refresh on so service monitor is running everything is uh, up we also have load generator that we can generate the load for so what we can do is we can port forward our application service as well on port 8081 and this is a simple load sh that is doing a curl to localhost 8081 slash work and you can directly do it so you can see what it will create done 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 So we can have these and then you can have metrics metrics you can have work or you can just do the load as such it will start putting out some it will start putting out some load and soon we'll be able to see different set of metrics over here And you can see the dashboard is updated. 
and we have new set of metrics. So like this, you can have metrics as code. Uh, there is also a persis operator that you can install on Kubernetes that have different custom resources. And these are the sample CRDs. So this is for the dashboard, this for the data source. And this is what will make it GitOps native. So you will have these and then you can easily update in a GitOps way. And also you have uh, the per CLI that can be used as part of your GitHub actions. Uh, so you can have uh, dashboard.go or whatever you are creating a dashboard for or a QLang, whichever language you prefer, GoLang or Q. And then you can have a CI per CLI over there validating it, outputting that to JSON, and then applying that configuration onto the server, Persis server. So I think uh, that's what Persis is. It's a CNCF sandbox project, uh, pretty neat under the CNCF ecosystem, uh, simplifying the specification for the dashboards. Uh, you should check that out. Let me know your thoughts as well. I think, yeah, I'll, I'll still be using Grafana, but I'll give this a shot as well because there are less number of uh, plugins or uh, data sources, I should say. Uh, but overall, I think it uh, serves the purpose of being Kubernetes native and dashboard as a code. Uh, let me know in the comments section, what do you think about Persis and will you try it? If yes, then also comment. Do not forget to subscribe and share it with your friends. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.